This episode is sponsored by Upstart. Abandoned by his father after his mother died giving birth to him, Tom Riddle was left in an orphanage to fend for himself until he was brought to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry by Albus Dumbledore. There, Tom would use the magic he learned from his professors and his own research into the dark arts to become the most evil sorcerer in the history of the wizarding world. Killing, maiming, and ruining lives as he pleased, nothing would satisfy Tom until he obtained immortality and the only way for him to do this was to continue taking innocent lives. You see, Tom, who at this point was going by the moniker Lord Voldemort, knew that every needless murder he committed caused his soul to fracture, and by using the darkest kinds of magic ever discovered, he could break off these fractured pieces entirely and store them in various artifacts hidden around the world. These artifacts turned vessels were called Horcruxes, and they allowed the soul of their creator to stay anchored to the land of the living, even when their physical form was destroyed. Destroyed. And you might be surprised to hear that they aren't unique to the Harry Potter universe. There's actually an iconic villain from Slavic folklore called Koshe the Deathless who had a similar insurance plan as Voldemort. And in this episode of the Messed Up Origins podcast, we're going to dive into a dark, disturbing, and straight up bizarre story about him that J.K. Rowling may have used as inspiration. What is going on, mere mortals? My name is John Solo. You ready to hear about the OG Voldemort? The Harry Potter Wikipedia would have you believe that the only two wizards to ever make a horcrux were Voldemort and some guy from ancient Greece named Herpo the Fowl, but they're sleeping on my boy Koshe. That's probably because the Ministry of Magic is trying to suppress the truth, but that's okay. I could tell you everything you need to know. Koshe the Deathless is probably the most famous antagonist from Russian folktales outside of Baba Yaga. Similar to Voldemort, he's a decrepit, rotting old sorcerer who uses black magic to stretch out his lifespan, and to kill him, one needs to find and destroy his soul. Now, full disclosure, there is actually a story called Maria Marevna, where Koshe is killed in a fairly simple fashion when a magic horse kicks him in the head and crushes his skull and that is not very similar to Voldemort. However, the events in the story that we're about to discuss, simply titled Koshe the Deathless, bear a striking resemblance to a specific Harry Potter book and the concept of Horcruxes. It was first collected by Russian folklorist Alexander Afanasyev back in the 1850s, but it's likely much older than that. Because apparently, before Afanasyev conducted his research, there was basically no one studying the folklore and culture of Russian peasants. So it's pretty likely that anything he collected in the 1850s had been floating around for a hundred years or so. The story opens with a prince named Ivan, which shouldn't be a surprise because pretty much every Slavic story stars a guy named Ivan. It's the equivalent of English folktales always naming the heroes Jack. Jack and the Beanstalk, Jack and Jill, Jack of the Lantern, Jack be Nimble, Jack, etc. It's Prince Ivan's 15th birthday, and he asks his father for permission to leave the kingdom and search for his bride. His father reflexively says no because Ivan is too young and inexperienced to survive this kind of journey. But get this, Ivan is able to convince his father, and the way he does this is by telling him that he already knows where his bride is. Apparently, when he was a baby, his nurses would always sing to him lullabies about his future wife. Beyond thrice nine lands in the thrice tenth kingdom, Vasilisa sits in a tower, and her marrow flows from bone to bone. What, didn't your nurses ever sing you lullabies about bone marrow? No, they probably just stuck with the usual ones about babies falling out of trees, didn't they? Moving on, the first stop that Prince Ivan makes on his journey is in a small village, and in this village's town square is a man being whipped. This is a shocking sight to Ivan, so he asks the townspeople what the man had done to deserve the punishment, and it turns out the man couldn't pay the 10,000 rubles that he owed a prominent merchant. Even worse though, anyone who steps in to help the man will be cursed to have Koshe the Deathless kidnapped his wife. Now at first, that was enough to scare Ivan off, but after walking a lap around the entire town and seeing the stranger was still being whipped, he figured, I don't have a wife to kidnap, so I'm probably safe. Using some of the money his father had given him for the journey, Ivan paid to free the stranger, and this would prove to be a huge mistake but also the best decision he ever made. You see, the man that Ivan has just freed is Bulat the Brave, and he knows exactly how to find Vasilisa, the woman who Ivan is destined to marry. So Ivan buys Bulat his own horse and saddle, and together they ride to the thrice tenth kingdom. Once they find the tower that Vasilisa is being kept in, Bulat throws a stone at her window and shatters it. Then he runs to he and Ivan's campsite and tells Ivan to give him the right wing of the chicken he cooked. Ivan does as he's told and Bulat races back to the tower, 
calls up to the princess, who can now hear him through her broken window, and says that he's there to offer her chicken on behalf of Prince Ivan. Yeah, imagine if your buddy told you he had a plan to hook you up with the princess, and then you find out that plan involves vandalism and chicken soliciting. Well, I don't know how or why, but Bulat's plan works. Initially, the princess was terrified about the rock flying through her window, but when Bulat offered her chicken, duck, and goose, she couldn't resist. Apparently, she's a huge fan of bone-in wings. When the princess opens the door to let Bulat in her tower, he pulls the old switcheroo and yanks her out of the tower. Then he escorts her to the campsite where she meets Prince Ivan and the two fall in love right then and there. But here's where things take a turn for the worse. The next morning when Ivan, Vasilisa and Bulat are journeying home, they hear the sound of men screaming and horses stampeding behind them. Vasilisa's father had discovered that she was missing and scouting parties were tracking her down. Bulat the Brave knows that he owes his life to Ivan, so he voluntarily stays behind to fight them off, despite Ivan's protests. And using nothing but his fists and the weapons that he tears from his enemy's hands, he's successful in killing them all. Except for one. He left one alive to pass the message on to the king, who is now even more furious and sent twice as many scouts after Vasilisa. But once again, when the scouting parties caught up, Bulat stayed behind to fight them off. And this time, he left no survivors. The trio figures they're safe to stop for the night and Bulat asks Ivan to stay on watch while he recovers from his day of saving his ass and Ivan agrees but he doesn't last long. Eventually he couldn't help but let his heavy eyelids close and the moment he fell asleep Koshe the Deathless appeared in their camp. The decrepit old sorcerer whose centuries old skin was pulled back against his face like a skeleton wasn't there to kill them though. In fact he disappeared as quickly as he arrived only when he left he took the princess with him. Ivan's curse had come to fruition, but all hope was not lost. He and Bulat could rescue Vasilisa if they could track down Koshe's fortress, and that was a lot easier than you'd think. After a few hours of riding in the same direction they had seen Koshe flee, they came across some shepherds who told them they were tending to Koshe's goats. So Ivan and Bulat followed the shepherds to Koshe's territory, broke their necks, and stole their outfits. Bulat and Ivan then drop off the goat's milk at Koshe's fortress, but before they hand it off to the servant, Bulat throws Ivan's ring into the milk bucket. Then, later that day, when Vasilisa strains the milk, she finds the ring and knows that Ivan and Bulat are there to rescue her. But it's not that simple. In order to truly be free of Koshe's curse, they have to kill the sorcerer, and the only way to do that is to find and destroy his soul just like a horcrux. So Ivan has to destroy the soul vessel to defeat the Dark Lord and save the girl. Does that remind anybody else of Chamber of Secrets? Even weirder, there's another Russian story called The Crystal Mountain that follows the same premise. Only instead of Koshe, Ivan has to slay a serpent similar to the basilisk. And there's yet another fairy tale where Ivan discovers the fallen feather of a firebird, also known as a phoenix. So basically, if you were to combine these three stories, you would have the second Harry Potter book. But wait, because there's even more similarities coming up. First though, I've got to say a real quick thank you to this week's sponsor, Upstart. If you've always dreamed of being financially healthy and shedding the burden of high interest credit card debt, Upstart can assist you with a personal loan. Unlike traditional lenders, Upstart knows there's more to you than just your credit score. So they calculate the size of loan you qualify for with different factors, like your income, current employment, and other info that you put in your application. The process is really simple and transparent too. After just a five minute assessment, you can see your rate for loans between $1,000 and $50,000. You can also receive funds as fast as one business day. Those funds can then be used however you need them to be. To pay off those pesky credit cards, consolidate your high interest debt, expand your business, or even just fund personal expenses. So if you want to join the million others who've used Upstart to get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date, either hit the link below or go to upstart.com slash John Solo. That's upstart.com slash John Solo. Don't forget to use that URL so they know who sent you. In order to find out where Koshe is hidden his soul, or his death as they call it in some versions, Vasilisa has to be tricksy. When Koshe gets home that night, she pulls him into bed with her, a brave thing to do if you consider what Koshe looks like and probably smells like. She gets the sorcerer riled up and says she's so happy he returned safe. She was worried that he'd been killed by wild animals on his hunting trip. After hearing this, Koshe laughs like a maniac, calls her an idiot and says, I can't be killed. My death is hidden with that broomstick by the entrance of the castle. Now Vasilisa figured this was a lie because that's a terrible hiding spot for someone's soul and she was right. 
but to prove it, she had to be clever. The next day, when Koshe was out hunting, she decorated his broom with her bedazzler and made it all fancy. Then, when Koshe returned and asked her why she did that, she said, I couldn't bear to see your soul looking so undignified. After hearing this, Koshe laughs again and says, You idiot, your hair may be long, but your brains are short. My death is actually hidden inside that goat. No, not that goat, the goat next to it. Well, get this. No, it wasn't. But once again, Vasilisa cleaned up the goat, made him all fancy, and Koshe responded by saying, You idiot, your hair may be long, but your brains are short. My death is actually hidden far away. In the sea, there is an island. On that island stands an oak. Under the oak, a chest is buried. In the chest is a hare. In the hare is a duck. In the duck is an egg. And in the egg is my soul. I know, it's almost as complicated as killing Voldemort, and interestingly, there's the same number of layers as there were Horcruxes, seven, which is actually a significant number in the Potterverse. Students go to Hogwarts for seven years, there are seven types of spells, seven obstacles on the way to the Sorcerer's Stone, at least in the book, seven ingredients in a polyjuice potion, the list goes on and on. After learning where his soul was hidden, Bulat and Ivan saddled up and rode their horses to the coastline nearest to Koshe's fortress. It was a few days ride and they ran out of food on the way there, but every animal the duo tried to hunt, the dog, the eagle, the lobster, begged for its life and said, if you spare me now, I can help you out later. So, Bulat and Ivan went hungry. Once they arrived on the coastline, they found a fisherman with a boat and he gave them a ride to the island. On the island, they found the tree, and Bulat ripped it out of the ground with his bare hands. Under the tree, they found the chest, and the moment they broke it open, the hare ran out of sight. But much to the duo's delight, the dog they had spared earlier caught the rabbit and brought it to them. Don't ask me how the dog got on the island, though. Apparently, it's a strong swimmer. Anyway, when Ivan and Bulat tore open the rabbit, the duck inside of it took to the skies, but it didn't make it far before the eagle they had spared earlier caught it in its talons and brought its carcass back to them. After receiving the carcass, they gave it a squeeze and a big old egg popped out of its butt, or wherever eggs come from only it came out too quickly and rolled into the sea. At first, Ivan and Bulat were certain they had run out of luck, but a moment later, the lobster they had spared climbed out of the sea, holding the egg gently in its claw. With the egg safely in their possession now, Ivan and Bulat raced back to Koshe's castle and kicked down his front door. Then, before the evil sorcerer could even react, Ivan smashed the egg on his head and Koshe the Deathless fell over dead. Finally, Ivan and Vasilisa were free to do as they wished, and they wished to return to Ivan's kingdom. So the happy couple, along with Bulat the Brave, began their journey home. If only things were that simple. Remember when I said there'd be more similarities with the Chamber of Secrets? Well, check out this weirdness. When the group had arrived in Ivan's kingdom, Bulat appeared to have lost his mind. Ivan tried introducing the princess to the dog that he'd had since childhood, and when the dog was let out of its kennel, Bulat pulled out his sword and chopped its head off. Ivan couldn't believe what he just witnessed and was furious, but he knew in the back of his mind that he wouldn't have his wife if it weren't for Bulat, so he decided to let it go without saying a word. But then, the next day, Bulat did the same exact thing and slaughtered his favorite horse. This was almost too much for the prince to bear, but Vasilisa calmed him down. She reminded him of how loyal Bulat was and all the sacrifices he made so they could be together. And once again, Ivan let the incident go. But on the third day, when Bulat beheaded Ivan's favorite cow, enough was enough, and the prince ordered for his once loyal companion to be hung by his neck. Once the order was made official, Bulat put his hands up and said, If I'm going to die, I want it to be on my own terms. Here's the real reason I had to kill your favorite pets. It turns out that while on their journey home, Bulat had stayed up to keep watch because Ivan already proved he couldn't handle it. And every night for three nights, Bulat was visited by Koshe's sisters who wanted revenge against Ivan. They told Bulat that the princess would be killed by Ivan's favorite dog and that Ivan would be killed by his favorite horse or cow. And worst of all, if Bulat warned them of the dangers, then he would be petrified. So, when he finally did reveal the truth, that's exactly what happened. Bulat the Brave was turned to stone, and it broke Ivan's heart that he had caused the death 
of the most honorable man that he knew. So he had Bulat's body transported into a secret chamber, not to be confused with a chamber of secrets, and would visit it every day. But get this, after a few years had gone by and Ivan had sufficiently mourned for his friend, the statue spoke up. It said, hey, if you really miss me and really love your kids, you could sacrifice their lives for mine and I would be free. Now you might be surprised to hear this, but Ivan and Vasilisa had a difficult time making this decision. They really did love their kids, but they literally owed their lives to Bulat. So after a lot of debate, they slit their children's throats and smeared their blood on his statue. And as tragic as that is, the good news is the ritual worked as intended. And the even better news is that Bulat knew exactly how to bring the children back. He asked the couple if they were truly heartbroken over their deaths, and of course, they said yes. And he said, well, go up to their bedrooms. You'll find them both sleeping soundly. And sure enough, they did. Then, to celebrate the conclusion to this several-year-long adventure, the royal couple threw a kingdom-wide celebration where Bulat was the guest of honor. I'll admit, kind of a bullshit ending. I think the kids just miraculously showing up in their beds after they were killed was the result of some translator or editor censoring the story for the more sensitive English speaking audience. I can't say for sure, but if that is the case, I guess I should just be thankful for the little bit of child sacrifice it did include. Anyway, if you ever wondered what inspired JK Rowling to write a story about a young man who was prophesied to kill the immortal dark wizard whose soul was hidden away in magical vessels and then marry the woman that wizard kidnapped, now you have your answer. I don't think that Rowling has ever come out and specifically said that Koshe inspired her, but she did study the classics in college and is obviously familiar with all sorts of folklore and mythology. So personally, I'd be more surprised if she hadn't heard of this story. I would love to hear your thoughts on it though, so leave a comment down below and sacrifice those like and subscribe buttons to the algorithm gods if you enjoyed this episode. And to those who heard me call this the Messed Up Origins podcast in the intro and were confused by that, let me shed some light. Going forward, all new episodes of the show will be posted to all podcast platforms on Friday mornings. So if you haven't subscribed on any other platforms yet, make sure you do because it's totally free and always will be. And YouTube likes to hide videos from your sub boxes sometimes. So this way you can be sure there are no shenanigans at play and you're all caught up on recent episodes. I'll see you all again next week when we explore the real life messed up origins of an iconic Disney villain, Sean Yu. Until then, my name is John Solo, and remember, John shot first. Do you want to say hi to the camera before I go? The camera's right there.